Oshinoko is taking over the anime community like a storm. Currently the number one anime on my anime list. Beating the likes of Full Metal Alchemist, Demon Slayer, which is not mid, Attack on Titan, and other incredible shows. But why is this? Out of all anime currently ranked number one. Well, I wanted to find out. And now I'll be explaining to you about the rabbit hole of Oshinoko. Before we start, just for context, Oshinoko was made by the same author as Kaguya-sama Love is War, Aka Akasaka. So judging by that, this should be a very decent show hopefully. <laughs> the first episode is, to say the least, a can of worms, which can be explained by this clip. You know, despite the weird 16-year-old high school pregnant shit, I would say Oshinoko is pretty decent. What do you mean? Yeah, well, there is this guy, and he's like obsessed with this 16-year-old idol, and it turns out that she is pregnant with twins. And then this guy is supposed to be the doctor delivering the twins, but then he gets murdered the same day she was giving birth. Then he reincarnates as one of her babies and- Ben, what the fuck are you talking about? Uh... <laughs> It's a bit weird, but I'll trust in Aka Akasaka. This store is going to be a tame, fun, and an enjoyable walk. Oshinoko is a traumatic story, one that actually made me shiver, cry, and rethink to myself, what the hell just happened? It's actually sad. Regardless of the very few genetic plots and tropes in the anime, when it comes to storytelling and character development, Aka Akasaka is an absolute genius. Each character felt so real, as if they were alive. But actually, before we continue, I wasn't even planning to watch or even read the manga. In fact, I haven't even finished Kaguya-sama. Please don't kill me. But anyways, I decided to watch it after my friends kept talking about it. So I was like, what the hell? It doesn't matter. Since they're talking about it so much, it should be a good show. Then after two hours, I realized that I only watched one episode. What the fuck? The first episode of Oshinoko is about 90 minutes long, but it works perfectly. But anyways, what does this have to even do with Oshinoko? Or the manga itself? Well, you see, after I finished the two episodes, I was like, guys, should I read the manga? And my friend confidently said, read. And I was like, okay, what could go wrong? Everything goes wrong. I have an addiction when it comes to manga, manwas, webtoons, all of those sorts. But it was late at night. I was just gonna read a few chapters and continue tomorrow. Problem is, I didn't sleep. I stayed up to 3 fucking a.m. Thanks, Malorenta. And now I have severe depression. And was it worth it? No, no it was absolutely. Ruby sucks, Abiko is the best waifu! After episode 2 of the anime, the manga starts off at chapter 14. As crazy as the first episode was, the show takes an entire 180 and starts to reveal why Oshinoko is such a masterpiece. The show is simple, but it reveals the dark side of the entertainment world, how actors are treated and how disposable they are once they are no longer needed. The corrupt nature, cancel culture, abuse, harassment, it's all there and feels very real to the real life internet we have to deal with nowadays. The main plot of this arc revolves around Kana Arima, an aqua who is basically the main character. Kana is an actor who's trying her very best to maintain what little fame and popularity left she has from her acting career. Kana is a determined and hardworking character in the show, and even though with all the misfortunes and people telling her to give up and quit, she tries her very best. The entertainment arc really shows the characters' feelings and how they think. It's beautiful to read such a beautiful manga, and I highly recommend it. Now let's begin the next arc of Oshinoko. The dating reality show art introduces a lot of new character, and my favorite of all, Pion, who is the epitome of an alpha gigachad male. But besides that, this arc mainly focuses on Aqua and his quest to find the true killer of his mother. The reason why Aqua joined the reality show is to gain information about Ai and her relationship with males. By doing this show, he'll gain information from the producer about things that most people didn't even know of, not even her own agency. As the story progresses, it shows more character building as well as some funny comedic scenes. I'm not gay, but Pion has to be the most sexy man I've ever seen. As fun and peaceful as this arc may seem, things start to take a real dark turn and everything is cranked from a 1 to 100 real quickly. Reality show shows a person's dark side. 
their weakness and their insecurities. But that's from the viewer's perspective. All shows are scripted regardless of how genuine it seems for the most part. But it's all bittersweet. If you aren't popular and were to do something distasteful for the viewers, then the viewers who are bewildered by this fake interpretation of reality are ready to bully and harass people to the point of even ending their lives, all because they didn't like them. It seems unrealistic, but this goes on every day in real life. This is the story of Akane Gorokara. Akane is a character who is passionate and trying her very best to gain the spotlight, but all of this is to please her manager and other people so that she can be acknowledged. But everything goes downhill and her life takes a turn for the worse. Being taken advantage by her so-called friends and co-workers, being pushed so hard by the internet to the point of wanting to end it all. But when all seemed lost, there was one single shining star that was willing to go out of their way to protect and help her. Aqua. After this incident, we really start to understand Aqua just a little bit more. Instead of seeing him as a lunatic who has DNA samples of tons of male producers or people in the entertainment world, we start to see something more honorable from him. Aqua, like any other human, has emotion and is kind-hearted. But his hatred for trolls and the TV producers who instigate these dramas fill him with a stronger desire to end everything. Even though Aqua wants to have a normal life, wants to feel love and have emotion for others, even still, he refuses to give up everything, no matter the cost, no matter who he needs to use, he will do everything to find his father and kill him. But before this arc ends and we move on to the next one, I wanted to give light to one of the coolest characters and also one of the funniest one, Mem. When she was young, her dream was to also become an idol like Ruby. But due to her mom getting sick due to overwork and wanted to get her siblings into college, she worked endlessly to support her family. And soon later, she was able to do that. But that was when she turned 23. But thankfully, Aqua being the nice person he is, asked her to join Ruby and Kana to become the third member of the idol group. The fourth arc of Oshinoko is probably the most tame and peaceful Oshinoko will be ever, in fact. Besides Aqua learning more about Ai's past and her relationship with Men, and a few clues leading to his father, this arc mostly focuses on Ruby, Mem, and Kana, and some bits of Pion, the Chad, who is secretly Aqua. This arc lasts for only 7 chapters long, the shortest in the entire manga, but even though there's very little content in this arc, it's still one of my favorites in my opinion. This arc really embraces embraces each character's feelings and thoughts. It truly makes them feel even more human and relatable. As you keep reading more and more chapters, you feel emotionally connected with each of the characters. Besides this, the main plot of this arc is Ruby and the gang having their first concert. This basically sums up this entire chapter, but with Oshinoko, when there is something beautiful and peaceful, there is a price to pay for it. The fifth arc of Oshinoko is huge, spanning over 20 chapters long. This arc is easily one of the greatest arc in Oshinoko. It introduces even more characters, some new and some old ones. Mouth Narushima. I hope I didn't say his name wrong. Melt was an egotistical, self-absorbing character that we all knew him to be. But after the second arc of Oshinoko, we see him being more conscious and self-aware of his surroundings and people's feelings. Throwing away his ego, he tries his best to learn to become an actor. We see him being a more down-to-earth, respectable person, unlike before. This change in Mel is honestly fun to read along. He understands his past mistakes and is trying his utmost best to become a better person. Mel shows hesitation due to his past, but now he has a right to call himself an actor. It was wholesome to see the progress of Mel. But let's get into the real story. Aqua's quest continues further as his desires grow even stronger as he gets closer to the truth. But as we continue along, we see Aqua telling others and himself that he hates acting. But as he sees Kana and everyone else acting to their heart's content, he is drawn in. Something that I would like to point out is the love triangle Aqua has with Kana and Akane. They both are actors in their own right, but they both share the same love interest. The moment Kana started to take the spotlight in their rehearsal, Akane started to get concerned and somewhat jealous. But before we continue, I wanted to enlighten you all with the greatest chapter of Oshinoko. Chapter 43. This chapter introduces her grace, the greatest waifu, Abiko! Yeah, baby! Woo! But actually, Abiko is a good character. 
As we get introduced to her, we see that she's an introverted mangaka artist who doesn't like socializing with people. It seems pretty generic and bland. But as we get to see her character more and more, we get to see what a manga artist has to go through in daily life. Abiko uses her busy schedule as an excuse to push people away and to not socialize. It seems selfish since she thinks that she doesn't have time for others, but people don't really understand how hard it is being a manga artist. It's hard. Having to spend all day and night drawing while keeping quality at its best is draining. The viewers will complain if the manga isn't done on time or if the quality is bad. Abigo is depressed inside. She loves drawing but not like this. She tries to vent her anger without really giving a thought as to what other people think. But she feels sorry for it and makes up for it. I think Aka Akasaka really put love and care into these few chapters. And I wanted to thank him for making Oshinoko and Kaguya-sama. Thank you for giving me the joy to read this masterpiece. Also, don't suck an old man's dick. Anyways, after this, we get into the real rehearsal, as each actor is trying to keep up with the pressure of the upcoming show in the next two weeks. All seems good, nothing weird so far. But all things come with a price, especially in Oshinoko. As Akko tries to bring out his emotion in acting, while he's finally having fun with it, he is quickly reminded of his goal and mission. He's not here for fun, he's here for only one thing, to find out who his father is and to kill him in the most painful, miserable way possible. Aqua has a panic attack and starts to pass out. Before he did, Aqua and Akane went to the director's house, where Aqua passes out as the director tells Akane a little bit of Aqua's past. But as Akane has a lot of questions, Aqua in his pass out state says, I. Here in this, Akane starts to realize a dark truth. As she thinks more, it starts becoming too much for her, and she starts to feel sorry for Aqua. Feeling overwhelmed with so many thoughts and emotions, all Akane can do is pity Aqua's hopeless state. Aqua tells Akane as a hypothetical question that he needs to do this acting gig to get higher into the entertainment world to kill someone. But Akane says that she'll kill him with him. To Aqua's surprise. Besides Akane comforting Aqua, the next few chapters have already been mostly talked about from early on before. Before I continue, I highly suggest you all to read Oshinoko if you really want to experience it. I'm only doing a light summary of the entire thing. It really doesn't do it justice, but I still wanted to make this. Anyways, let's continue on to the second half of this arc. As we start chapter 55, we see Abiko getting riz. But anyways, as the show gets ready to start, we see old faces appear to come watch the show, as well as the director. But unlike the other people there, he is concerned that Agra might have a panic attack on stage. Even though he has these thoughts, he still believes in Agra, because for the first time in a long time, he saw Agra trying to the best of his abilities to bring his emotion into acting. We also see Akane and Arima making their declaration of war to each other. None of them want to lose to each other. This isn't about petty feelings. It's an all-out war to see who will take the spotlight and prove to themselves that they are the superior actor. But all seems good until we see Aqua trying to suppress his emotion. He's having a very hard time due to his past trauma, but he has no choice but to go on stage and starts the show. All of his hard work depends on this very moment. As the show starts, we get to truly see the acting ability of all the characters. Each person in their own right is perfectly incorporating the fictional characters into real life. But as we enjoy the show, we finally get to see Mel. Even though I have already already spoken about him, he really plays a strong part in these few chapters. Everyone doubts him, no one believes that he'll be able to do anything. As everyone puts him off further and further, Melt refuses to let anyone take advantage of him. He will surpass his old self and prove that he's here to stay. He makes all doubts of his acting ability disappear and indirectly tells all of them, fuck you, I'm a Chad now. Okay, he didn't actually say that, but you get the point. Good actors understand the character they are playing. They can give up the same emotion the character would have. Mel didn't understand a single thing Ago told him, but he didn't want to give up. So he decided to try his best to understand his character. By learning the character more and more, he starts to relate to the character and, and he starts to understand the character he was playing. Seeing how pitiful the fictional character was, he felt as if he was looking at a mirror. It was him. It was as sad and pitiful as he was. He started to cry thinking about it. Using his emotion, he takes the spotlight and entraps the entire stage. This, he's able to make everyone feel the character was alive and real. After this part was over, everyone was happy to see that he improved, and Melt himself finally found happiness in acting. As they continue, the real juicy part starts when all the main characters are put into the same stage. Here's when Kana and Akane have their standoff. Neither one of them wants to lose. This is when we get a flashback to Akane's past, and we see her desire to act and also the downside of 
of it. Akane admired Kana when she was a child, but after Kana told her the reality of it all, she lost her love for her and she started to hate her from that very moment onwards. But she'll use this hatred to fuel Kana's real acting back. But I feel like I'm going too fast, so let me show you but a glimpse and beauty of this chapter. But it doesn't work. Kana doesn't want to take the spotlight. Instead, she wants to make Akane shine brighter to make the viewers more engaged. This shocks Akane, and after they go backstage, she gets confused as to why Kana was doing this. Aqua explains why and tells Akane that together they're going to make Kana act to her foolish abilities. As Aqua does his part with the other cast members, he is then put into a position with Kana. With this, Aqua uses his foolish abilities and shows Kana that he can take it off. Kana understanding what Aqua wants and gets excited, starts to shine, each time brighter and brighter. Akane, seeing this, is happy and she starts to get horny for some reason. But with this, Akane is able to end her row off. Now it's Aqua's turn. Aqua knowing that if he doesn't act properly, then his chances of climbing up the ranks of the entertainment world will be all for nothing. That's why he'll force himself to do it. With this, he knows that he'll never enjoy acting ever again. But that's okay with him. He'll use the pain from his past as a fuel for his acting. His rage, hatred, and the feeling of being powerless in front of terrible hardships. He'll use it all to give a pitiful but awe-inspiring performance. One that will leave the audience in awe and respect. But with this double-edged sword, his ego slowly consumes him ever more. Slipping deeper into a desperate stage of hollowness. He's empty but full of emotion. Emotions. Emotions that won't be ever forgotten. This chapter is a monumental one. It shows Aqua's inner demons by using these demons for his success. And thus the curtain for the Tokyo Blade closes in the mist of a thunderous applause. With this, the video has ended. But before you guys are confused as to why I stop at chapter 66, the problem is that this video will become too long and I want to upload this video before Oshinoko stops airing. There's currently 7 episodes out. But if you guys enjoyed this video, then please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. If this video does well, then I'll make a second part covering the rest of the manga. Anyways, thanks for watching. Elite signing off.